Um, so how did you get to know Terry Simmel? How did he become an important mentor of yours? So uh, that business plan that I wrote uh, in, uh, in December 1994 uh, for Warner Brothers uh, was later approved. It was presented to Bob Daly and Terry Semmel, who were the co-chairman and CEO of uh, CEOs of Warner Brothers. And uh, I can remember that meeting like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, they approved online. They didn't approve CD-ROM. Wow. Uh, CD-ROM carried too much inventory risk. Mm -hmm. And Warner Communications had uh, had a very bad episode uh, with uh, E.T. Remember uh, E.T. for Atari? As a matter of fact, there was a documentary that I think was just filmed about digging up all the cartridges in the desert, which was like Al Capone's vault, except they actually found the cartridges. This ju <laughs> just happened a few months ago. At any rate, uh, it almost crippled Warner Communications. And so there was... they overspent on E.T. There was, you know, it's like this massive gaming platform and the biggest movie in the world, and what could go wrong? Mm -hmm. And so they ended up taking on a lot of inventory, and, Same uh, thing we're seeing with Candy Crush now. It wasn't a great game. Yeah, but with Candy Crush, you don't have physical inventory, right? No, you so, just have a plunging stock. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had any wine, let alone enough wine, to bite on those little... <laughs> I know Sarah fairly well. That's why these go so long. Yeah. So I knew that Where was the case, by the way. I knew, so I don't know where Shannon is, but uh, Shannon heads up communications for LinkedIn and um, helped uh, coordinate all of this. And I was very excited to do it, I, I think. Sounds amazing at this stuff, but I asked how long it would be, and I was expecting 30 minutes, minutes, 45 <laughs> minutes. I mean, fireside chats very rarely You go. probably shouldn't tell them how long it's going to be. They're so all going to get very so nervous. So Shannon says, it's, it's, you're up there with her for an hour and 45 minutes. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. She's like, no, you're going to be on stage talking to Sarah for an hour and 45 minutes. I was like... Well, I can't even say what I said at that point, but... <laughs> We've already had Ben and, Horowitz. And then, Every expletive yeah. has been laid out on this stage. And then, <laughs> and then I, I remembered that she serves booze. <laughs> and I was like, see, that's Sarah. She wears you down and she gets you drunk. And then she just keeps asking progressively more difficult questions. So note how she started with my beer. Like, whatever, it's my beer. I don't, no one cares. And then by the end of the night, she's going to be like the hardest hits, like Mike Wallace with like a cigarette. Like, I've got We're flop sweat. So I've got like flop you. sweat going. <laughs> See, that's that Yahoo media training. Wear me down. <laughs> yeah. All right, so where were Terry we? Terry Simmel. So Terry. So uh, Terry and Bob approved the online piece, although uh -huh. they did say... Uh, we're going to approve it, but we're going to approve it on one condition, and that is that it's break even from day one. Not like most internet businesses. Break even from day one, which gives you some insight into the way they thought and why they were so incredibly successful running Warner Brothers for a couple of well, decades. But do you think that's why they were Hollywood in general was very unsuccessful with the first wave of digital? It's because of the losses that mounted. Well, no, because of that attitude of it needs to be profitable from day one. I oh, mean, that's not really not how consumer enough. businesses are built. So. That's or really how media businesses it's, are built. It's a really interesting perspective. I think uh, they wanted us to, to take a responsible approach to it. And you could argue about whether or not we were allowed to take enough risk, but you know, they, they staffed it. They provided the, the capital, the resources, uh, the space. And this was something that was not well understood at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, they let us take a shot at it. And they wanted it done in a responsible way, not with some unlimited budget. and. And I thought that's where you were going because that was the other end of the continuum, which is, yeah. oh, yeah, just go. Do whatever you need to do. And uh, that also didn't work out well for a number of companies and folks. Right. Um, at any rate, the guy who um, originally ran Warner Brothers Online, a guy named Jim Malashuk, did a licensing deal with AOL for content. Mm -hmm. And so uh, AOL uh, was helping to subsidize the, the growth of uh, that part of our business and then we did start investing and asking for more resources once we had proof of concept. Mm -hmm. And people started to understand what it was we were trying to accomplish. And we started investing in original streaming animation. And we created a site called Entertaindom, which was the mm -hmm. first of its kind. And uh, this is going way back. It's like 98-ish. Mm -hmm. And um, at any rate, had a, a fair amount of exposure to Bob and Terry at that time because they increasingly wanted to learn about digital. And again, I'm this really young guy in these meetings with these media moguls, mm -hmm. true media moguls. Yeah. And uh, that was one of my favorite parts about working on the internet. It was right. just a pure meritocracy. 
Well, that was the cool thing about those very early days of the internet is that, I mean, certainly we live in Silicon Valley where young kids can get a lot of opportunities that you know they wouldn't be able to get in other industries. But particularly then, even within big companies, young kids could get opportunities because no one knew about the internet. There was no one with 10 years of experience in the internet. So it's like a 20 year old, like, I don't know, maybe he gets it more than we do. I mean, it was even more of a time where you could just forge your own career path. So that's exactly what it was. There was no one you could point to and said, bring in the more experienced person, mm -hmm. because it didn't exist. It was completely new. Mm -hmm. So um, at any rate, I had a lot of exposure to very senior executives at Warner Brothers that I'm incredibly grateful for. And uh, I, I got a chance to, to get to know Bob and Terry at the time, uh, two amazing guys. And uh, at, at some point, they elected to um, move on. They retired from Warner Brothers after roughly 20 years. and. Uh, and Terry was thinking about his next chapter, and he started a, a private equity company. And he asked a few people that he had worked with uh, to join him. And so uh, I was fortunate to be one of those, uh, one of those folks. And uh, we originally started with a, a broad uh, purview, which was all media, and then over time became increasingly interested in digital media. But about nine months into it, we had identified the, the vehicle that we wanted to invest in, and we were going to help run and, and then use that. Uh, as a jumping off point for other things. And uh, literally like a week or two after we identified this asset, and we were gonna move forward with it, it, it made a lot of sense. It ended up doing really well, but it was without us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he got a call from Jerry Yang. Mm -hmm. And Yahoo had just announced it was uh, transitioning leadership. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when he told it's me the about it. Jerry Yang whistle. It's it's the Jerry Yang, every time you mention Jerry Yang, a whistle goes off. An angel gets their wings. <laughs> so so uh, I said, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, Terry, in light of the transition they're going through in your background, if Jerry asks you to run Yahoo. He said, no, that's not what this is about. I met Jerry up in Sun Valley, and uh, he probably just wants to continue the conversation we started, maybe ask for some advice for the media industry. I said, I don't know, man. It wouldn't surprise me. He said, no, it's not going to happen. And Goes did you believe up. it, or were you just sucking up? No, no, I genuinely thought, no, I didn't need to suck up to Terry at that point. So there was no sucking up at, at, at all. At that point. Well, there was no sucking up at all. I'm not, I'm not a suck up. I knew, by the way, as soon as I said at that point, you were going to say, at that point, no, there was no sucking up. I need to interview people that I know less well because you're predicting too many of too my much. maneuvers. So, so I'm sure an hour and 45 minutes from now, you'll have, some of it will have tritted and you'll get me. I'll be vulnerable. So at, at any rate... We'll hug and you'll feel yes. better about it all. All good. Well, it's all good, especially with the wine. So uh, Terry goes up, comes back down. He says, you were right. He, uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in running Yahoo. I said, I knew it. I knew it. Told now, you so. Now, why did you know it? Because that was not an obvious pick. If you thought about Yahoo and had been kind of following the industry for a while, you recognized that at heart, even though it may not have labeled itself as much, it was in part, a media company. Mm -hmm. And Terry was one of the most successful media executives over you know, the preceding X number of decades. Mm -hmm. So it just made all the sense in the world. And, and Terry was extremely well regarded and had uh, very, very strong relationships uh, with the creative community, uh, with other business executives. So it just, uh, I just thought it would be this interesting kind of sleeper pick. And uh, so at any rate, I said, uh, well, that's great, Terry. You know, let's get back to work. And he said, no, no, I'm going to do it. And you didn't said, think you'd do it? No. I said, what do you mean? And he said, yeah, I'm going to do it. This is the, my, next, my next chapter. And I said, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. I said, uh, this is one of the highest profile companies, and one of the highest profile industries. The entire industry just imploded. And it's going to be a, a, a very intense turnaround situation, very different from what you've been doing. And he said, yeah, I get all that, but this is what I'm going to do. Wow. And uh, I said, well, good luck with that. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to sit tight and stay down here. And he said, no, 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 you'll, you'll come up. And I said, uh, <laughs> I'm no, not sure you heard me. I'm very happy here in L.A. and <laughs> the entertainment industry and the convergence of entertainment. I'll, I'll just, I'm fine, comfortable. He goes, no, no, it'll be great. It'll be an adventure. You'll take it one day at a time. He's almost impossible to say no to. Really? Yeah, it's one of the reasons for his success. 